Welcome to this episode of The Garage with Dennis. This week, we're gonna meet a new friend of the program, John Moore from Box Kita Racing. This could be your avenue into becoming a race car driver. We do wanna thank our sponsors, Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms, and our friend from Craftsman. Make sure and go to craftsman.com to become a Craftsman Club member. If you wanna know more about what we're doing, go to inthegaragewithdennis.com. You can find our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter pages. But for now, take a seat. The show starts right now. Hi, my name is John Moore. I'm starting up Box Kita Racing. I'm looking to help people not repeat the experience I had to get to the point where I'm at, which is learning to be a race car driver. I started out four years ago with my station wagon. I showed up at the track with, literally I'd gone to the ski area the day before. So I came in, I had snow tires in my car, I had a roof rack, and I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I showed up at the Porsche Club, they took me through, they showed, and they literally started from ground zero. This is how you drive around the track, these are what the flags are, this is what apexes are, this is what track out is, this is how you get around the track without running into things and being safe. And I did that for a couple of months and I got better at it. And then I got to the point where my instructor said, you might be driving beyond the limits of your car. So I asked them what the best thing to do is, and they said, you need sway bars. So I went out and bought sway bars, put those on, and went back driving on the track. Next time I said, oh, you'll probably be on the limits of your car again. So I, what was the next thing? I did tires the next time, and tires made me so much faster that I went through the brakes even quicker. So I upgraded better brakes. And it just, throughout the summer, I kept each time the wagon felt like I wasn't getting as much out of it. I upgraded the wagon. And by September, the wagon was pretty much set, and then I'd gotten to the point where it's like, it's time to look for something else that's better for riding on the track. I found a shop, Outback Automotive, down in Auburn, and uh, they were willing to work with me, and my criteria, which was, had to be a track toy, had to run 50,000 miles, and they had to be able to do that, flogging the heck out of it every time I went to the track. And on top of that, it was supposed to be somewhat believable and matched the horsepower ratings I wanted. We went on about a three month odyssey of trying to find components that would work at 7,000 RPM for 30 minutes at a time. We had some issues. I bought what I thought was a Cosworth engine off Craigslist. It turns out it wasn't. Mm. It ran 15 minutes and then we took it out and took it down to the machine shop, found out it was seized because it was properly clearanced. So once we got it clearanced and set up, and I told the machine shop, 7,000 RPM, 30 minutes at a time. And so once we got all that, put it back in the car, the car ran great, except that I was picking up a lot of stuff off the track and I couldn't figure out what it was. And I went to the pits and I found a guy who was a racer. He'd been racing for five years, knew all the stories, drove a fast car. And I was like, come ride with me. And he's like, ah, I don't want to. He, he had a thing about wagons. So I finally convinced him to get in the car with me and we went out and he's like, go faster, faster, faster. You're driving too slow. And I finally pulled in the pits and looked at me, dude, I drive faster than anybody else. And he goes, you are driving too slow. Your tires don't heat up, and that's your problem. Don't let up until I tell you. We went out, and we went down the straight at the ridge. We're doing 140 going into turn one, which scared the crap out of me. Don't lift. Okay. I'd never done that before. Going to turn two. He said, downshift one gear and stomp on it. And we did. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. Lo and behold, the car stuck. And he goes, just keep going. He kept driving faster and faster. And then we got all done. My lap times dropped almost 15 seconds that day just because I wasn't driving fast enough. I recorded 1.25 Gs as I was going in a decreasing radius turn, and I was sitting on the headrest. It literally had popped me out of the seat, and I was hanging on for dear life, just trying to be able to control the car so that I could stay on the track. And so I came back into pits, and I went around and find all the racer guys. I'm like, all right, so I can't stay in my seat. And they're like, you've exceeded the limits of the car. You've done everything you could possibly do to that car to make it go fast, and now you need to buy something else. I, I just, it, it got to the point where the wagon just wasn't cutting it and I wanted to do more. And every time I talked to Carly, I said, you need to be a race driver. You've, you've exceeded the limits of the wagon. Honestly, you've done more with that wagon than anybody's ever done before. You need a race car. So I come down to the shop and he, I come in and there's a trailer in the garage. There's a, a Suburban in the garage. There's a Miata in the garage. All of this, 16 grand. Wow. Now that's a, <laughs> that's a bitching deal. I was like, all right, this is, you know, this is gonna be expensive. So I sat down with my wife. I'm gonna do three days. I get my novice license. At the end of the year, I'll have my senior license. And I, well, that was kind of an, a great vision, but the reality was 
in conference racing, there's three levels. There's the novice license, which basically you show up, you do the driver school, and they give you a novice license. Then you run three races, do interviews with a bunch of instructors, do some work assignments, and then if you do all that and pass the test, you become an air driver. And then after three races, more work assignments, more track experience, you get promoted to senior driver. Senior driver essentially is you go run with anybody you want in any other league. So we go out and we show up first day. Carlos shows up, he's TC Motorsports, shows up and I got a bunch of friends there and they go through and they, he teaches me everything and the crew, everything they need to know about running a race car. And by this time I've invested probably five or six thousand dollars just getting the car ready to go to the track. I had to buy new tires, I had to update the fire system and just admired a little stuff in the car to make it work. We go out and run the race and that day actually goes really well. Other than food expense and gas expense, it wasn't too bad. The next race we go to RP down in Oregon. We're not, the hotel's an hour away, we get lost on the way there. It, it just, everything goes wrong. The car breaks down at the track, we're doing work at the track trying to get it fixed and I can barely keep the car running. I'm having trouble driving in the course, it's brand new to me. I mean. You name it, whatever could have gone wrong. The only thing that didn't happen, a car didn't catch fire, but I had a great off-road excursion, ripped the air dam off, and I just, one thing after another went wrong. And then September comes around and it's even worse. The car, we're shredding belts and the car won't run. And finally, Saturday afternoon, and I'm like, we've been working on the car nonstop for two days, and finally I'm like, I'm done. Put it on the trailer and walk away and try again next year. So, we come down to the end of the year and I started thinking about, you know, how am I going to do this next year? And then even more so, I thought about the people that I saw at the beginning of the year that were running novice and showed up once or twice and I never saw them again. They never completed the novice program. I was talking to the novice director and he said, yeah, people take years to complete the novice. It costs a lot of money. And they can never get the equipment around. What if we made this really easy for everybody to get in novice? Kind of like how you do, you sign up for scuba lessons. You come in, you pay a flat fee and they guarantee you get your paddy license so you can go out and go open diving you can rent the gear and go off and go. What if racing was that easy? You pay a flat fee, it guarantees you the four races you need to do to get your license, which is the training school and then the three races to be novice. There's somebody that helped you get to all your, class, all, your, all your events, get in the car, get you all set up, make sure you do all your assignments, helps you with the homework, everything else, and we just do a flat fee program to do that. We provide the car, everything. All you gotta do is show up. And everything else, somebody helps you do that. Well, if you do that, then how much easier would it be to make senior driver? Same thing, we set up a program for area drivers, cost more money, but you're doing more races, you're driving with faster people, so you need a faster car, and make that, again, a flat fee. I guarantee you'll make senior driver. We can take all the experience that I've been through and the other drivers that I've talked to and go, this is what it takes to make it, this is your money up front, and you know how much money it's gonna cost. And then you're an area driver, and you can, or a senior driver, and now you can go rent cars, or you can go find your own car and buy your own, and take off and go. And that's my idea, was to take all the experiences I learned and turn it into, we can make this easy for you. You pick the races you run and run, and we'll have the car ready there and waiting for you and somebody to help you get going, and you're all set. I'm John Moore, and that's Boxkeeda Racing, and that's our idea. All right, that was a great segment. We had a lot of fun. Stay tuned for our tips, tricks, and reviews coming up next. The 2014 Dodge Durango RT is proof that the large SUV is far from dead. From bold styling, both interior and exterior, a great new powertrain, the overall look of the Dodge has certainly changed. And the Durango has certainly concreted its place in the large SUV market. Our Dodge Durango RT test vehicle for the garage with Dennis was covered in red line red with two coat pearl exterior paint. One of the distinct exterior features is the class exclusive LED racetrack tail lamps. 192 individual LEDs blended from one seamless ribbon of glowing red light. It is certainly a Dodge muscle car inspired SUV. 
New available LED daytime running lamps and standard projector headlamps with available LED accents light up the road like the red carpet. Available auto leveling technology adjusts the headlight beams, aim for slight changes in road service elevation so you'll know what's coming. Available automatic high beam control headlamps adjust high beams automatically while available low beam headlamps enhance nighttime visions. One of the other signatures items on any Dodge product is their floating split crosshair grille. Dark or bright accents is designed to lead you forward without looking back. One of the great ideas that Dodge has come up with is their brand new steering wheel that comes with a standard range of high tech features to keep things low effort for the driver and your eyes on the road. The interior of the new Dodge Durango engages all of your senses, from the available Napa leather trim seats and a high quality sound system, to the enjoyment of advanced technology. Go ahead, take a peek inside. One of the most interesting things about the Durango is the seating arrangements. There are more than 50 different seating configurations to see what cargo will fit with you along with your passengers. Available premium second row fold and tumble captain's chairs allow the passengers to move from the second or third row between the chairs when the vehicle is not in motion. Although the award-winning 3.6-liter Pentastar V6 engine is standard and creates 290 horsepower and 260 foot-pounds of torque, it's the 5.7 Hemi available and installed in this RT version with 360 horsepower and 390 pounds-feet of torque. Thanks to dual variable valve timing, fuel saver technology, and the new 8-speed automatic transmission, the new RT is actually listed at 16 and 22 miles per gallon respectively. The 5.7 liter Hemi gives the 2014 Durango a trailer tow capacity of up to 7,400 pounds. If you'd like more information about this or any other Dodge products, please go to Dodge.com or to view our other reviews, go to InTheGarageWithDennis.com. Thank you so much for spending time with us in this episode of The Garage with Dennis and checking out some of the stuff that we showed you in this episode. We do want to thank some of our sponsors, of course, Royal Purple, the performance oil that outperforms, and Craftsman. Make sure you go to Craftsman.com and become a Craftsman Club member. If you want to know more about what we're doing or check out old or upcoming episodes, go to InTheGarageWithDennis.com. You can find our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And until that time comes, I'll see you soon.